In this video, I need to show you an optimization that's very important in Python. And this has to do with checking for an element in a set versus checking for an element in a list, because there is a crucial difference, especially if the list or the set contains millions of items. One of them is definitely going to be better and more efficient than the other. So for this example, we're going to import from timeit the timeit function so we can perform some tests. Then we're going to create a list called my list, which is going to equal a list of the range of 100,000. So we're going to create 100,000 values in a list and we're going to duplicate that, change it to a set and create a set from all these values. So both of these contain 100,000 values. But now we want to create a simple test and the test is going to look for an item or an element inside the list and inside the set to see which one is actually faster. So to create this test, we're going to type in list time and that's going to equal time it and it's going to take a statement. So we want to check that the number 99,999 is in the list. So we'll say in my underscore list. So this will be the snippet of code we will run and we're going to run it a thousand times. So we have to type in number 1000. We're going to run this snippet of code 1000 times. And we also need to refer to globals as globals because this code here has no idea we're talking about this unless we refer to the globals. Then for the list, we will print that the list took this amount of time and it has to be a formatted string. So here we'll type in list underscore time dot six to format it to six decimal places and we'll type in seconds. Now that you've got the gist on how we're going to time the list function, I'm just going to copy and paste in the set function. So it's exactly the same thing, except this time we're using my set. So they're both checking for membership of this variable here inside the list and inside the set. And the whole point of this is to find out the speed difference between them. So speed difference is going to equal list underscore time minus set underscore time. And that's going to be divided by list time times 100. So we can see how much faster set is going to be. Then we can print the formatted string of speed difference to three decimal places, so dot three, and we will add a percent and faster. So that just shows you how we're going to perform this test. As soon as we run it, it's going to take a few seconds or maybe even a second. And you'll see immediately that the list took one second while the set only took this incredibly low amount of time. And we can even increase this. We can even say 1 million, for example. So 1 million on both. And we're going to change this to 999,000 to both of them. So it's essentially the last element in both of these iterables. So let's run this and see what happens. Now you will notice it's going to take a bit longer and this time the list took nine seconds while the set took essentially the exact same amount of time as from earlier. So why is this? Why is it that the set was so much faster when it came to performing this operation of checking whether a value was inside it? Well, one of the major reasons is that the set in Python is implemented as a hash table and that allows for efficient lookup, insertion, and deletion operations. The second reason is that the set on average uses the O1, which is the constant time complexity. In theory, it doesn't matter how big the set gets, it's always going to take the same amount of time to do that search. And that's just on average. If you go on to Stack Overflow, you'll see a lot of people arguing that it is not O1, but something else. But on average, it will be O1, while lists use ON, which means that if the list gets bigger, so does the amount of time to search for an element in the worst case scenario. The third reason is that sets only allow for unique elements. So that might be something you don't want. Maybe it is something you want, but due to it only allowing unique elements, it will reduce the search space compared to lists, which can have the same element as many times as it wants. Sets also do not store the order, which means you're going to get a random order back each time you get the set back. 
while lists have to preserve that order. So that will result in an increased overhead when you are trying to retrieve or do anything with lists. Now, of course, these are two different data types. So depending on the needs of your program, you might opt in for list or you might opt in for set. If the order doesn't matter and you don't want any duplicates, a set might be the right choice for you. But it's also worth mentioning that to create a set does take a bit longer than creating a list. But honestly, I don't know how many sets you are planning on creating. If you're just creating one set, it should be fine. If you're creating a million sets, you might want to work out whether you want to use a list or not, depending on how many elements each one of them contains. But to sum this video up, if you want more efficient insertion, deletion, and lookups, use the set because again, it uses a hash table, which is incredibly efficient. While the list might just be more, let's say versatile, it can do a lot more, but it also comes at the cost of efficiency. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.